Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah As we mentioned before, part of the Islamic mannerisms and adab that we should be concerned with is giving salams saying salamu alaykum to your Muslim brother or Muslim sister and this greeting is from Allah Azza wa Jal and it is the greeting of Islam the greeting between, between the believers so much so that as we mentioned before when the Prophet Sallallahu said Haqqa Muslim ala Muslim khams the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the five haqooq or five rights that the believer has over another believer that it was mentioned from amongst them and in the hadith on Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والذي نفسي بيده لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا أولا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه تحببتم تحببتم أفشوا السلام بينكم رواه مسلم إن الحديث ذا الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم الحديث بابي أب أبي هريرة Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said by the one whose hand, whose hand my soul is in meaning Allah azza wa jal so this is the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam swearing by Allah by the one whose hand my soul is in You will not enter Jannah until you believe. So that affirms for us Iman. That affirms for us we Iman. We must have Iman. We must have Iman. Be Arkana Sitta. We must have Iman, faith in the six pillars of Iman and everything that Islam came with from the Kitab al Sunnah. So one of you will not enter paradise until he believes. And one of you does not believe. So here's the condition for belief. One of you does not believe until he loves. Meaning he loves between between the, the mu'mineen. Has this love. Had a many man. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should I tell you about something that if you do it, it will cause you to love? It will cause you to love. Give salams between you. Ru'ahu Muslim. Ahabatibillah, that is something simple. All of us can do this righteous deed. Every single one of us, as long as we have contact with other Muslims, we can easily do this deed. And we can get reward for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is dalil or evidence on uh, regarding your iman. And it also increases the love between you it will cause you it will cause love and I tell you and I told this story before but I, I especially in living in Saudi Arabia and in a Muslim country in general but especially there I notice you know you're going to for Salat al for example and maybe you're going to a new masjid maybe you're going to one of your regular masajid you see Muslims from everywhere this one's from Jordan this one is Saudi this one is Ethiopian this one's Somali this one's Cambodian this one is this and you go to the masjid or maybe on the way you're tired me I, I'm a morning person I, I, I need to sleep even though I don't get the chance to I have to work but I am not the kind of person who's a smiley and maybe it's from our culture that we don't like to be happy in the morning a lot of us from my culture so 
that beautiful salam that a lot of times you see the guy, sometimes you're so tired you don't even want to look at him hardly. You just, salam alaikum. You see him, salam alaikum. He's from Palestine, Philistine, he's from here, and he gives you the salam back, and that made love between you. You're walking to the masjid, you pass him, he's an older man. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This increases the love between you. That's just something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that shows you that important Islamic manner which all human beings is so in accordance with our fitrah. Even in a, a non-Muslim society, if you're not given salams but you're still greet people, or someone greets you, it softens your heart. If you want to give nasiha to someone, you greet them first. You come to them, and then you... That softens their heart. But if you say, Akhi, I need to warn you about something. Akhi, you did this. Akhi, la. But if you say, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, you shake his hand. Akhi, I, I just wanted to share something beautiful with you. Or whatever the case may be. The point is, is giving the salams. And this causes the love. So from this hadith, many, many benefits. One of the benefits, of course, the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ swore by Allah Azza wa Jal. And as Muslims, we say, Wallahi billahi. We swear only by Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't swear by the rock, we don't swear by the trees, I don't say I put that on my mama, I don't, I don't swear on my mom, I don't swear on this, I don't swear on that. No, the Muslim swears only by Allah, so it shows us how serious to swear and testify like that to something being true. And that it's something that you don't joke with, you don't just say, well, lie, well, lie with, with everything and playing with it. Another benefit of this hadith, this hadith shows us that a person will not believe, uh, uh, enter paradise unless they have iman, unless they believe in Islam and everything that Islam came with. So, unlike some of those people who believe in one religion, Wahdat al-Idyan, we have them in the West, especially in America, and you know, the people who are interfaith. I'm not talking about interfaith dialogue necessarily, but it depends on the, the extent of their dialogue. Are they saying, are they having dialogue to the extent that we're just one, you're all people of the book and you're going to go to paradise? Those people will say this, this is kufr. And we have many of them. Here in Washington State, where I'm at now, there's a group called the Three Amigos. One is a priest, one is a rabbi, Jewish rabbi, and the third is supposedly a local Muslim here. But I, how can we call this guy much of a Muslim when he says, I've listened to it before with my own ears, and he said it on NPR, National Public Radio, he said, yes, you also will go into Jannah. And even the radio pronounce, radio uh, host was like, you know, really, you believe that? Is that how, you know? They said, yes, you know, the Quran gives this status and Ahl Kitab and Kitab, lies. Lies. Yes, Ahl Kitab, we can eat their meat. When, and as a Muslim man, I can marry a righteous Christian or a righteous Jewish woman. Those are ha hakuk that Allah has given us. But with that being said, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those who disbelieve from the people of the book, min ahli kitab wal mushrikeen, and the, and the polytheists, all throughout the Quran, all throughout the sunnah of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make takfir of, the, uh, of any non-Muslim. It's just, that's, that's creed. So, that lets us know this hadith, verifies that for La tudkhulul jannata hatta tu'minu You will not enter paradise until you believe. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, and then he talked about Wala tu'minu that you don't believe until you love between you. So this love that you have for your brothers is it is an obligation. But if you don't have love for a particular believer or what have you, this is a weakness in your iman. We don't say he has no iman. But this is a stern warning that in general you have to love the believers. Because they love Allah. In the Allah Ta'ala, they worship Him and you're united based upon that worship. Then the Prophet ﷺ gave advice. Should I give you uh, something that will increase your love, that will cause you to love one another? And what is that? Giving salam. So it also shows us what? That giving salams is something that will increase the love between us. So give salams as much as you can 
to the believers and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.